Hey everyone, this is Brian Drury of Overcoming Graduation, and today I wanna to share a quick message on how you can make your Zoom presentations more interesting and engaging. Recently, I was helping a friend prepare for her speech, and she was worried that if she didn't have really fancy, nice slides that had great text and great images that people wouldn't be engaged, that if she didn't have videos and all these different visuals that she was gonna lose the audience. So I sat back and I asked her, think about the best speakers you know. Think about the people you love. Do they use slides? She went, hmm, no. I said, think about Sean Stevenson. Think about Tony Robbins. Do they use slides? And she went, no. Now it's not to say never, but the great, great, great majority of the time, and especially if they're telling a story and delivering content, they are masters of controlling your attention. And they understand that's their most important role is to control your attention to get you the best possible result. I said, now that being true, now these pros and these experts not needing slides, why is that? And we were talking about this and she went, huh, that's interesting that they don't need them. That's interesting that they don't use slides. And I said, why are you using the slides? And she goes, honestly, I'm hiding behind them because it's scary to get out in front of an audience. And this is a convenient way for me in this Zoom world to say, oh, well, I'm just making this more entertaining for them when really it's about me hiding behind them. So I don't have to worry about me. They're not looking at me, I'm less vulnerable. And I said, the reason that the best speakers have the impact they do, and the reason they're so engaging, whether it's virtual or not, or even on a pre-recorded video, is because they are paying attention to you. They care about you. They're not thinking about themselves and worrying about themselves and worrying what you're gonna think. They're willing to get vulnerable and put themselves out there because they know that's the best thing they can do for the audience. So how can we make this more engaging and more interesting? And I said to her, first thing, get rid of the notes because so many people just read their notes or read the slides and how absolutely boring is that? How horrible is that? Even just saying it frustrates me because I've sat through almost a decade of corporate meetings where that's 99.9% .9 of them. Most people don't even know the content well enough to be able to speak to it, let alone go and memorize the slides and be able to give an eloquent presentation. So when you think about being more engaging, one, get rid of your notes. It's going to help you engage more. And you're going to pay attention to the feedback in the room or in the virtual room. Two, lose the slides. And if you're gonna have slides, they need as few words as possible. And I'm talking a single word, and that might be too much in some cases. I did a three hour training in a corporation to teach people how to give effective presentations. And all it had on every slide was either one word or one symbol, and that's it. Because I know the second I put a bunch of words up on a slide, the audience is gone. They're in it, they're lost, they're reading, they're gonna grab their own conclusions while I'm talking, they're disengaged. Now they come back, now they're trying to catch up, now they're lost. So the most responsible thing I can do as the speaker is make sure their attention goes where it needs to for them to get the maximum possible result from this presentation. Then also do the work to memorize your speech. By actually having the speech memorized, you can lean in more to the emotion and you're not as easily distracted if an IM pops up or someone's moving around on their camera, you're able to stay in the moment and be there for them. Now, a couple of quick things on audience engagement, because one of the best ways to keep your audience engaged is by doing activities. This comes from my mentor, Sean Stevenson. And activities can be raise your hand if you've ever blank. It could be write this down. It could be talk to your neighbor and share an insight. So there's a number of different ways to do this, but I was talking to my friend and she was saying, how can I do this in a virtual context? And I said, here's what you do. You pre-frame it and let them know how they're going to engage. You let them know they're going to, there's gonna be activities, but how are they gonna engage? Because if you just say, I want your answers, someone might think, oh, I'll unmute and yell it out. Someone might write it in the chat. Someone might ask questions randomly. You need to set the audience up to succeed. So if you say, I'm gonna ask questions, I'm gonna ask you to answer them in the chat or raise your hand if, you know, keep your cameras on so I can see you engaging on there. Another could be ask a question in the Q&A box. By telling people these things that they're coming, you set them up so they know when those moments come within the speech and you say, all right, go into the chat box and write this. That's a way for them to be engaged. They realize you care what they have to say. You want them co-creating this experience and they don't feel like, ah, oh, this person just doesn't care and they're just talking at me. These are a couple ways to make a Zoom presentation more engaging, more exciting, but also by having yourself on screen, not having slides and not having a bunch of text all over, you can be more engaging. You can use your body, you can use your hands. And some people go, well, I'm not that interesting or that compelling. Think about the best stories you've heard. That person could have been sitting in a chair slumped over, but if they tell that story and you feel it in their heart, you feel it in your heart, it doesn't matter how big their gestures are or if they're really animated. 
It's about the truth in the story. That's what we get lost in. That's what we love. And that's what people need more of. So I want to see you do this more. I want to see you get out and share your messages. So I hope this helps you make, even in a virtual world, your presentations more exciting, more interesting, and more engaging. I love you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and stay connected. You could also subscribe to the podcast, check out the website, overcominggraduation.com, because I would love to stay connected with you and I'd love to hear from you on how you're applying these techniques and how they're working in your life. That is all for today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. And I'll be talking to you all again real soon.